Hello, hello, how's it going? All right, let's get this party started. How's everybody doing? Welcome, welcome. This should be a good one. I'm starting the cowboy. The cowboy. Just got back from ZBrush Summit. It was so awesome. I'm still, so my batteries are charged, I'm ready to go. Let's go, Mad Duck. What's going on, Chris? Chris, I'm sorry you couldn't make it, man. I wish you could have. Next time, bro. Next time. All right. What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome. What's up, Rabid? Sea Drifter? Feel like Romper Room. You guys remember that show? Romper Stomper. Bumper Boom. <laughs> okay. Let's see. You just check something really quick. Okay. I know, day job. Curse you, day job. Okay, so um, we're going to block out a, a male, a male, I need to turn this off, it's making me noises, okay, it's going to be chiming all night, because I posted some pictures from ZBrush Summit, and people are responding, and I'm following other ones, and it's just kind of crazy, so a lot of people said, you know, do, let's, let's make a, let's make a male, so, um, and I love, I love, uh, the work by Johannes, of course, from the, the pirate girl. And I brought back some goodies. I did, Squid. How's it going, man? You stayed up most of the night last night sculpting. It was so inspiring. It really was. It was super inspiring. Um, I'm gonna let you guys look at his fear for a second because I brought back some toys. Some toys from the show. If I can get untethered here a little bit okay so at the show um, form labs was there and so was moonray the the two printing some some printing places and they asked people that were participating in the zebra summit to send them some files and uh, asked if they could print some of our models so I sent Sprint, Way, Sprint Ray one of my models, my Kate model, and then I uh, sent Form Labs my Pirate Girl that I did during the stream, and I'll show you those guys right now. So this one, hey Vector Ride, how's it going? Yeah, it was great. So here's here's this one. You can see how big she is compared to my hand. She's pretty pretty tall. She turned out great. So, you can see the detail in there, maybe. I'll hold it steady for a minute. You can see the gun and the hands and all that. And she didn't break on my trip back. <laughs> I thought the, the hands came off of this one, but uh, the other ones didn't break. It's just, I just glued it back on. But this one is huge. They printed her out. Huge. Look at this. See, this is my hand. Look at this. She is gigantic. And she made it home in one, ple one piece. I couldn't believe it. So check out the detail on that. Right? <laughs> is that crazy? And all the words coming out. So nice. She's huge. Yeah. <laughs> when I put her back here, she doesn't seem that big. But she is gigantic. Very big. And then... One of my students, Angel, he gave me this. Look at this baby Groot. He made this for me. So cool. Look at that. And a funny story about this 
is it was it's made of like super thick plastic or porcelain or something it's heavy and it was in my bag at the airport and they pulled this out they wanted to see what it was um, not not the blade you'd think it was you know the blade on the on the girl it wasn't that that set the alarm off it was this thing because it was so thick but uh, yeah Angel he did he did a fantastic job with this and gave it to me so anyway they pulled out they pulled Groot out of my bag and then they were instantly jealous <laughs> that I had a baby Groot so super cool super cool super cool who made the concept for Kate um that would be uh, my my good friend Josh Black Joshua Black he was one of the concept artists on Disney Infinity who he did a lot of the character work on the for the concepts and so you can look him up Joshua Black um, and uh, if you go and look at my Kate posting on ArtStation, you'll see the original art that that was based on. So, yes, fantastic concept artist that that there, Josh Black. You know what they pulled out of your bag on the way to the summit? What? I don't. I don't want to know. <laughs> Do I want to know? <laughs> oh boy. All right, let's get this, let's get this rocking. Um, <laughs> I think I told this story before, but my friend Klim, he gave me, uh, he gave me a statue of a unicorn, but the head is a hand and it's like giving the middle finger. <laughs> it's called zero F's given, I'm, but you know, not F's. And, uh, it's, uh, Oh, oh, it's, oh, Tom. yes, I do know, I do know, thanks for joining the stream, man, wow, wow, <laughs> wow, and wow, okay, uh, anyway, he, so I had this thing in my bag, and, and it's like, you know, coming across the scanner, and it's like, this hand flipping the bird to the people in the scanner, <laughs> It was horrible. So they're like, "Could you come over here? Let's let's open this up and see what it is." <laughs> oh man, yes, good times, good times. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me, man. That's great. Oh, okay. And see, I'm I'm just making a sphere. <laughs> anyway, here we go. Let's get let's get this going. We are going to start with the pelvis on this guy. <clears throat> and with with males, they're I usually I'll, I'll get into it and I'll show you guys, but they're usually uh the the pelvis, I like to have it be a square box rather than all round and curvy and hipped. I'll show you that. Uh yeah, naughty, naughty. <laughs> yeah, this this concept I need to put his name on here, but this is, uh, and I, I'm horrible at pronouncing his name. He's Swedish. He lives in Canada. His name is uh, Johannes Helgeson, or something like that. Anyway, Johannes. You can look his art up. He does such fantastic work. Such fantastic work. And he has a very, very good sense of volume and light. It's fantastic. What happened to the dragon you played with on one of the streams? Oh, um, I was just kind of blocking that out. I have an interesting, so an interesting story about that too. Um, yeah, I just like dragons, and I just wanted to block him out because I was trying a new uh, technique with Z remesher. I wanted to see how far I could push it with blocking something out. I might, I might finish that uh, sometime. But this is something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. And it's uh, it originated from. I'll show you. So my my good friend Kevin Keel, he works at Avalanche. Um, let's see. He he did an original, the original. Well, he did a cowboy riding a dinosaur, and it was the coolest thing ever. 
and he made he made another one for me. I'll show you guys really quick. So here's one of them. See this guy? And I love I love I love the concept of this and the dinosaur and the lighting and all that kind of stuff. But the guy is a little undefined and a little classic, just kind of regular. Uh, there's not there's not anything too exciting about him. So that was one. And then let's see. I'm just gonna look up his art. He did a, just kind of a sketch of one. Here it is. Look at that guy. He did the same same kind of guy. This this is the one he did first, and he did this uh, dinosaur in a in a full run, and this cowboy in the back. Can you just kind of picture this whole you know western, but instead of horses, they're using dinosaurs. It's just a really cool idea, and uh, you guys might recognize this. I modeled this for Digital Tutors a long time ago. Is like in orange for digital tutors, so it, that was originally Kevin Keel's art. So, um, I I will be doing both characters, Blands. How's it going? Um, yeah, I'll be doing the dinosaur and the guy because I want to pose the dinosaur and the guy in this pose eventually. Because how cool would that be in a collectible? You know, like a a running dinosaur with a cowboy riding it in full full stride. So. Yes. Jane's Gurney's Dinotopia. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, let me let me show you guys one more thing before we get going. Let me see if I can get it going. It's over at Zebra Central. Uh, let's see. See if I can find it really quick. If it takes me too long, I won't. Okay, here it is. Okay, so when I first started uh, learning ZBrush, I made a dragon, and let's see. And this is like way out of my wheelhouse. This is this is something I did a long time ago, and I made every scale by hand with a clay buildup brush. In like ZBrush, it was like. Three, I think. ZBrush three. I'm trying to remember. Visit. Let's see if I can visit this page. Um, yeah, it was based on this Caesar by, and I, I modeled it out really low res. And here you go. You can see a close up. I did this. Yeah, all the scales by hand. It was insane. I don't know what I was thinking. I. This is the only time I ever thought I might get carpal tunnel when I was doing this dragon and I rigged it up with Z spheres a long time ago trying to figure out Z spheres um, and here I, I was experimenting with making normal maps and stuff like that at the time and this is uh, inside Maya you can see all the scales using the normal maps and stuff like that and there was even an animation of it but um, the reason I wanted to show you guys this is because uh, the <laughs> the guy that worked on the dragons. I'm tr Dan is it Dan? He worked on the dragons of uh, from Game of Thrones, and I I was hesitant, but I wanted to show him that dragon. So, uh, let's see. You tried? <laughs> oh, Lady Luck. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, anyway, the the D Dan Cat. Catch him. What is his name? You guys can help me out. I'm, I suck with names. But he was one of the present, presenters at the Zebra Summit this year. And he was talking about making dragons and stuff like that. And I just, I was able to talk to him. And, you know, I just wanted to show you that I really like dragons. And I've made one before, so I know how difficult it is. And so I was really interested in what he had to say. And it was, it was su super cool. So. <laughs> oh, Dan Catcher, thank you. I was close. I was close. Oh man. Okay. Let's get to this. Boring you guys to death talking about stuff. Anyway, if if you have the time and the means, I highly suggest you go check out that 
that presentation. It was he's he's super duper entertaining, funny guy to listen to, very animated. <laughs> yeah, he's totally priceless. So good. And he he makes his dragons. He doesn't do every scale by hand. He has a really cool technique that he shared on that uh, on his presentation. So you should check it out. It's really cool if you haven't already. Okay, let's see. I'm just kind of blocking stuff in. Oh yeah. Oh, I know you are. <laughs> I know you are. So, uh, Thomas Whittlebach, is that how you say your name? Is your first, you, you pronounce your first name Thomas or tell me again, since it's not part of your name. So Thomas, if that is indeed your name, he gave a, t a, a presentation on jewelry and, and his designs last year. And that was absolutely fascinating. So you should check that one out as well. Tomas? Is it Tomas or is it? I'm sorry, dude. I'm sorry, forgive me. <laughs> or Tomas. Tomas or Tomas? So, uh, yeah, his <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Next time you see me, you're just going to like, tsh, and, or shake me by the shoulders and yell at me what your name is so I can get it in my head. It's really cool, though. I remember that. Are you, so this is Harry Mandibles. It's not, it's not the Thomas that... Uh, that streams with Pixelogic. That's a different one. This, this Tomas. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> uh, we'll, I, we, we call him the wizard. The wizard. Um, he. <laughs> he's probably laughing his ass off right now. That is you. Oh, you do some mold 3D classes, right? Is that right? Like you're gonna answer me through the camera? Is that right? I forgot about that. Okay. But I just want to make sure that it's not going to... Are you going to do some streaming? You should do some streaming. You would be fantastic. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's... This is priceless, watching me fumble, trying to pronounce Thomas's name. Tomas. Tomas. Am I saying that right, Tomas? Please be right. No, I mean on the on on the Pixelogic channel. Do you stream on Pixelogic? Man, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay, last night here on Pixelogic, where the hell have I been? I've been answering e emails. That's where I've been. Jeez. Okay. All right. It didn't notify me. I didn't get notified that you were streaming. All right. I'm going to have to watch you next time, and you can give me grief that way. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry, dude. Oh, my goodness. making my, my face go red because I'm embarrassed. Every other Monday. Oh, fantastic. Okay. I'm going to catch you. <laughs> no drama. <laughs> nah, you, Tomas, you're, you're one of my favorite personalities. I love to talk to you. 
I just have a constant smile on my face the whole time. And you have cool shirts. So with with males and females, um, with the males, I don't pull this out as far, and I don't pull the hips as high. Some differences, and then we got to get the get the package going. Not too much. <laughs> oh, you get into light reflections. Awesome. Gosh, we got to check it out. You guys are teasing me. The things I miss, I'm gonna have to go back and watch. Let's get these angles small. Tomas, did you get did you talk to Dan? Did you get a chance to sit and yap with that guy? He's so intense. Reminds me a little bit of Christopher Walker. Christopher Walken. Walken, not Walker, Walken. You know. <laughs> Watch his, watch his presentation, and you'll know what I'm talking about. Dragons! <laughs> oh, he's, he's, I'm not making fun of him. He's just, I love him. He's awesome. Because he has that type of personality. It's super, super fun. Right? <laughs> he's, he's so intense. Just the way he explains things is the is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, there's no magic sculpt button. <laughs> I want to know where that magic sculpt button is that he found to sculpt dragons with. Because <laughs> he gets all ready, he's like, "I'm gonna tell you the secret. <laughs> there, there is no magic sculpt button. That's the secret." <laughs> Oh my goodness. He's so funny. <clears throat> yeah, the co the coolness slider. <laughs> he said so 500 times. <laughs> I'm from New York. Even when he's I was relaxing with him in the green room. It's called the green room. It's just where you go chill between lectures and stuff. And he's all hanging out in there. And even like chilling out, he's still intense <laughs> and funny to listen to. I don't like round. Gotta get square. Oh yeah. I asked him if he would. I don't think he's interested. He told me he'd make a good teacher. Oh, I'd make a good teacher. I just don't know that I want to do it. <laughs> you can see him saying that. He said, but it's inevitable. Someday I will. <laughs> so I guess someday he will. going to take some finesse. Uh. Okay, these little tiny feet are bugging the crap out of me. See, I usually just get all the all the pieces in and then I go back and finesse each piece into place, but I can't stand it just like looking like the Michelin man or whatever. I have to I have to finesse it somewhat on the way, <laughs> or it drives me crazy. And these feet, being a, a non-feet shape, <laughs> non-foot shape. Damn it, I'm so sad I missed your stream. Look, his feet are on wrong. All you gotta do is move this over. Now they're right. <laughs> These these uh, sh shaps are going to be fun. I can just borrow them from the the pirate lady, right? 
How's everybody doing tonight? Anyway, everybody good? How many of you guys got to go to the, the ZBrush Live Summit? Or, or even watched it? It was so good this year. The Sculpt Off guys, holy crap. The, the competition is fierce. I cannot believe the winners were able to pull that each of those off in three hours. Three hours. What? Come on. You can you'll see what I can pull off in like two hours. Barely get past what I have now. <laughs> three hours. Madness. You ever done that? Have you ever done the sculpt off? Are you going to? You should. That'd be awesome. But I know your stuff takes long, a little longer than three hours, right? You could probably pull something off, though. <clears throat> Jewelry sculpt offs. Oh, that'd be so fun. With. So, who. Where did you do that? Ah, okay. Still. Still. I want to see it. Yeah, I'm not surprised. What's up, Rob? How's it going? Sculpt off was fantastic. I don't know why I'm singing. I'm singing. Hey, how's it going? Oh, hey, big dog. Thank you. <laughs> Just trying to get this guy blocked out. And he'll look really funny until I start figuring stuff out. Ah, yeah, working. <laughs> cool. I missed you again. Missed you again. You need to go one of these times, Rob. Oh, oh, not, you know, you could, I, couldn't you take like images of your finished products and put them up there? And maybe some uh, progress shots of how you got to that point. I don't know if you necessarily need a, a render, you know. And maybe you could, um, maybe you could decimate it and stick it into like Marmoset or something or Sketchfab, so people can like check it out in real time, you know. That would be cool. If you want to know how to do that, just ask me. I'll show you. It's not hard. Hey, what's up, Sean? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, I can't. I can't show you now. I can't show you how to do it right now. Um, you know, Caparian. I, I, uh, I'll, I would have to take. I would have to take the time to do it. Because it it involves Marmoset, and this is a uh, Pixelogic's channel, so I might be able to do it on my own stream or something. But thanks for asking. Am I doing the dragon as well? No. Um, that was just kind of a practice, a block out practice. His legs are way too short. I know that for sure. Kind of stumpy guy. But we'll get there. I think he's short overall. He's like a 
John Wayne or something. <laughs> Three hour dragon and a cowboy. Oh, I better get this pen smoking. <laughs> Let's get it worked out. What's up, Sumerian King? What's up? <laughs> Sorry if I yelled in the microphone. Sumerian King, everybody. Oh, yeah. <laughs> PFFs. Oh. There, done, ship it. It's my new character. <laughs> Into his house. Yeah. <laughs> Those little monsters, what are they called? Whoa. Man, I always forget you can, s with 4R8, you can swap the, the primitives. If you don't turn off this gizmo and you click another primitive, it'll just swap it. <laughs> That's not what I want. To turn off the gizmo and do it again. I absolutely am. I'm all like <laughs> super loopy. My voice got all dry, and I was because uh, at night we went to we went to uh, well the first night we went to um, the Scum and Villainy Bar. It's like a pop up Star Wars bar that they made permanent. Um, so it's all decorated Star Wars cantina style, and uh, like they had the little. The little nooks, like where Han shot Greedo, you know? And they had like blue milk and all that geeky stuff. It was awesome. So they had loud music in there. And, uh, what was I going to say? They had, so I, I was talking really, you know, really loud in there. And that, then I gave a workshop the next morning. And then we had the, the ZBrush Summit party that night, and they had loud music there. So it's like by Sunday, during the day, I was just like, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sound like Marge's sisters. <laughs> Switch brands. How you doing? Oh, you did? Oh, man. All right. I'll have to invite you next time. Gotta, gotta check it out. If it's still there, I hope it's still there. It's doing pretty good, I guess, so hopefully it sticks around. Okay, his legs are feeling stumpy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna double check his, uh, his proportions really quick. Do a little cheaty McCheat face. Just kind of see where we're at. Mm, yeah, he's just feeling wide, you know? His legs could be longer. Let's see. He's just wide. And I guess uh, I guess you can get on an app. They have an app. Not that I'm going to download it for one night, but they do have an app where you could uh, you could vote for whatever they were playing. And I. <laughs> They were, the owner was saying there's like 16 different versions of the Cantina song <laughs> so that you could that you could try check out so I heard the Cantina song several different times different ways but they didn't they didn't just play Star Wars music you know they had they had other music going on And then the um, the bartender was dressed like like a bounty hunter, so he's he's kind of Han Solo-ish, uh, but dark-skinned dude with uh, 
with uh, blue, like super bright blue contacts and really cool hair. So he just really looked apart. Hey, what's going on? Big dog, would I do the T pose? Um, that's kind of what I'm doing. It's called a, I call it a neutral pose. And it's not a T pose, it's more of an A pose. But it's, I just call it a neutral pose because it's kind of the neutral position, right? better. This might be a little too heavy handed. <laughs> Harry Mandibles. <laughs> we don't, we don't <laughs> serve your kind in here. Androids. No androids. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> Oh yeah, this, okay, so, so I had to like, I have to like, uh, massage Kyle to get me one. <laughs> these are for, these, these are from the, uh, from the volunteers and I just happened to catch Kyle in his office and, uh, he was kind enough to, to give me one of the leftovers. This, this was the last, last day, last night. So all the volunteers had their shirts. That would be a cool, that would be a cool thing to do to volunteer at that ZBrush Summit. So they do volunteers every single year. I don't know where they get them from, but they're students, students wanting to become 3D modelers, 3D artists, and uh, they just have a good opportunity to rub, rub shoulders with the pros and stuff that are there. And uh, I had, I had some good conversations with several of them. They were just asking me questions about the industry and you know what to put in their portfolio and things like that. <laughs> oh, the CMYK logo shirt. Yeah, that was a, that was a fun one. Very fun. I got one of those. Oh, they put a call out on their Twitter account that led up to the summit. Thanks, Mad Duck. I didn't know how they how they collected them. <laughs> Does it fit, Sean? Awesome. Very cool. I was wondering. I handed out a few of those. So I have shirts with my logo. See the logo above me right here? Except for it had a, the bear that looks like me. Let's see if I can show you. This this guy right here? I had a shirt with this on it. This The, the logo's offset because that's 1080p anyway I can get into why it's offset like oh yeah I forgot it was offset on my screen did I miss any questions mm -mm -mm. oh hey yep I'm live <laughs> I'm live. Sorry about that. Sorry for the confusion. I post a link to my, whenever I live stream on Pixelogic, I post a link to my private uh, student Facebook group for my course. So that's why. But welcome. This is Pixelogic's Twitch stream. Oh my goodness. Right? Blands, right? I, I got the opportunity to hang out with those guys um, and I rode to the airport with them yesterday morning and uh, we were just talking about, you know, manufacturing and different factories and how to, how to prep the models, just stuff like that. And they're, they're such cool guys and they know their stuff. They're on a different level, man. That, I can't, I can't even fathom how they do what they do. We, I was actually complimenting them on their their fire and smoke. If you saw that Boba Fett, because we 
we tried to do these premium characters. We had like Buzz Lightyear taking off with some smoke coming out of his jetpack. And you wouldn't believe how difficult stylized smoke is to get looking like smoke and not like popcorn or something like that, you know? It is just incredibly difficult to figure that out and to make it look not cheap. You can cuz you can do some some cheaper things like uh make it out of semi-translucent material, but then it starts looking cheap. Um there's different things you can do. But yeah, that that Boba Fett was nuts. So good. So good. And then did you guys see the one I where they're all fighting, they're fighting, I can't remember what it was called, but this big giant robot, and there's like seven different figures. Each figure was like this tall, fighting this giant robot. I thought it was from X-Men, but I don't think so. It was, I, it was unbelievable. Yeah, the replays of that, that's, uh, that one is awesome. So good. Sentinel, thank you. That's why I have you guys here, to remind me of how ignorant I am <laughs> of geek culture. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Let me turn these lines off and just kind of take a peek at, peek at this. Um, and this, like I said, this will this will keep changing proportions and stuff as I go. The Magneto with all the stuff floating around him. Oh man, and that uh, that Batman that's like Samurai Batman. Man, where did they even come from? Those guys. So good. That's good. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. And they brought those on the plane from Singapore. I wouldn't dare. Wouldn't dare. I was, I was, yeah, I was too nervous about just this one thing. They're like bringing those, I mean, the, the Batman samurai was like this, this tall. He, tons of detail. This crazy awesome position. Yeah, way cool. Way cool. That poison ivy, yep. Had to see him in person too. So good. Let me let me see if I have him really quick. Anyway, I'll have to show you guys another time. The Demogorgon. Yeah, I took I took some close-up pictures of that thing. It was so good. Didn't they give away a miniature of that? Like a smaller one? Let's see. And I'll never get used to this, but they it's they they knew who I was for some reason. Like they 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 liked my work and knew who I was. And I'm like, are you who And I feel bad because I've seen their work before, but I didn't Yeah, it's uh humbling, humbling, humbling. Can't believe it. So I was I was so happy I could spend some time talking to those guys. And is it on, is it on screen keyboard? Wait, oh, Sean, <laughs> they won the full size. Oh, well, they had one. Maybe I was confused because they had one up on the table that was pretty short. I don't, but you're probably right. They probably did win the full size one. Now that I think about it. Um, I want, why am I doing it this way? Palms down, guys. Palms down. Do that. Why palms down? For rigging. Like this. Not that you can see that in the camera, but... 
That's what you want to do. <laughs> Samaria, no, he was holding in his hand, so his hand must have been gigantic. <laughs> you know, like big old meat hooks. No, it was it was it was literally like this big, the one on the table. But the one in the gallery was like this big. It was it was big. It was huge. It's possible you use with Shh. Oh, book uh bazooka plasma. That is a no Noah board. It's called N O H board. You're talking about the keys, how you can see me pushing keys? Yeah, that's N O H board if you want that. I'm like, what what are you talking about? It took me a minute, sorry. <laughs> hey, what's up, Tiago? Welcome, man. Welcome, welcome. We're just blocking out a new dude. This time it's a dude for once, right? Then, uh, Bazooka, then you just, you can set it to alpha, and you can kick out the alpha, and then you can just key out the background. And that's how you can get it, like, all the letters floating across the top there, like that. Yep. <laughs> Sean, you'd like it. <laughs> Just be lucky I'm not playing country music the whole time, huh? Ding -da -ling -da -ling. <laughs> Working on the cowboy. Okay. Sorry, this is kind of... F f my my uh, camera's kind of flipping out a little bit tonight. I don't know what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> Let's get his head size in there. Before I finish off those fingers, Get his neck. Oh, psh. remember it switches. Pink head. There's my character, all done. <laughs> I didn't I didn't compete in the sculpt off this year. I just watched. It was fun to watch. For once. No, I competed two years ago. That was great. It was very, very stressful. I'll tell you it's stressful. But it was a lot of fun. Oh, Blance. So you know what I would do? This is totally cheesy, right? But when I was working on the Infinity characters, I would listen to the soundtrack of whatever film they were from to get into the mood. Like when I was doing, um, working on the Pirates, I was listening to the Pirates soundtrack, you know? Unless it was like, you know, some movie that didn't have very many songs to it, then I wouldn't listen to it. But it, it works wonders for getting in the mood. And I actually have, uh, on Spotify, I made a channel called Songs to Sculpt By. And they are all movie soundtracks. Not Disney movie soundtracks, but they're all like epic soundtracks. That's what I usually listen to when I'm, when I'm sculpting. I don't know why. It just gets, gets you in the sculpting mood, I guess. I know, that long... That long neck, you'll, you'll, uh, I need to, uh, I'll work it out. Don't worry about it. It'll get there. Maybe I'll leave it. <laughs> okay. I was kind of, I was kind of liking it. What are you talking about? Looks like a frog. Hey, Kyle. I was talking about you. I was, 
I was showing him the shirt that I stole from your office. <laughs> Are you, what? I can't believe you're here. You should be home asleep after that. Thanks for the shirt. It fits me. Oh yeah, my dandelion. Do you guys remember that dandelion I did? A long time ago. Three years ago. Yeah, dude. I, that's why I'm like, why are you here, man? Go home. Go to bed. Maybe you are home. I don't know. Wide face. You guys put on an excellent, excellent show. As usual. I tell my family it's like my Super Bowl. That's my super, that's my geek Super Bowl. I go to every year. Can't wait to wait to go again. Just had the, we just had the playoffs. <laughs> oh, they don't have the hat in the store. What's up with that? Maybe it's too new. guys going to sell that hat, Kyle? <laughs> Sean, LA sizes. <laughs> Only Mel Melrose sizes <laughs> shoulders are up there oh cool better get some bigger sizes up there for Sean Kyle Not many left of the hats. Yeah, those are nice hats, man. Very nice. I didn't grab one either. Like a dummy. Um, Iverth, Iverthen, welcome to the stream. Um, you have my brushes for seven. Are they compatible with eight? They are not, but I have redone the brushes so they are compatible with eight. And you can get them by going to uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com. You see above my head right here. Uh, go to 3dcharacterworkshop.com and I give them away for free so you can just grab them ag again on my website. Just, you know, uh, just download them again and they'll work. The new era. Aura. Yeah, I have, so I have these and I've changed it up a little bit because I used to have like a, a chisel or a, a carve brush that's now replaced by this chisel brush. This new one that comes with 4R8. And uh, <clears throat> I put out the snake hook brush and got rid of the clay buildup brush just because m personally I don't use them. And it's super easy for you to, to pull out those other brushes and make this look however you want. So not a big deal. New era. Pull these shoulders up and out and make them squared off. I feel like his uh, pelvic region needs to be adjusted. Little, little smaller pelvic box. Not that one. <laughs> I'm talking about the entire square that the pelvis fits into. Square like this box. 
shape. Okay, let's give him a, a little bit of a rumpus here, but there. What do you think? Done? Butts? Done. Gotta hide these arms so I can see what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, gl glutes, glutes, but but <laughs> bubbles. Gluteus Maximus, the maximum glutes that you can have, gives it a new meaning. Whoa! <laughs> so you can. I usually you can't really drag them across the center line because it fights with itself. You know, you can't move into the move, so you have to inflate. Inflate will actually cross the center line. But it'll also inflate, right? So you gotta be careful. You don't wanna you don't wanna over inflate those glutes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh the fitted versions? Yeah, get on it, Kyle. <laughs> Rob's putting in requests. Rabid, discovered a hidden gem with your fill brush. If you're doing low-res Dynamesh block out, it smooths the surface real well without obliterating the detail. Awesome. That's good to know. Thanks, man. Love that brush. Okay, let's see. How are we looking on time? Nine? Nine o'clock my time, anyway. Let's see how we're looking on proportions. Might have made him a little too tall. Ah, oh, he's alright. Maybe he could be a little skinnier. A little narrower in the shoulders, just eh, maybe not. But I do need to, I need to peek his shoulders out, like raise him up. And I'll, I need to get the traps in there, but for now, I'll just kind of blend this up a little bit. All right, John, take care, man. Thanks for dropping by. Did I miss any questions? If I miss your question, um, just ask it again so I can catch it again. Sorry, I've been been focused here a little bit. Whoa! <laughs> Look at that! I accidentally used the clip brush and just clipped right <laughs> right through. Better turn on the select rectangle before we get into tr too much trouble. Okay. And this part's kind of weird and it probably drives people crazy. People that actually know anatomy, like not me, probably drives them crazy. Because what I do is I combine the lats and the traps together along with uh, all the little, the little muscles in between. And uh, just because what I'm looking for when I do this is um, I'm looking for form and silhouette, just the, the forms that it creates on the silhouette. Because you hardly ever see people's lats and, and traps like 
you know, blatantly out there unless they're like super ripped and they and they're not wearing a shirt or something like that. So I'm just I'm just trying to get the 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 volume in there and the silhouette in there. So it's just a really nice way to uh, to to help me figure that out. And I learned this from my friend Steve James, who might be watching tonight. Are you watching, Steve? Sometimes he likes to lurk. <laughs> what? What's the dead? Oh, the deadline is is Halloween, man. Deadline's Halloween. I like to do a challenge in my course. Well, I just started this month to give people a deadline so they have something to aspire to. It's something to push them. And this month, of course, the theme is Halloween. Who's this concept by? Uh, I wish I made it, man. Shh. This is by uh, Johannes Helgeson. I'm probably saying his name perfectly wrong. Just like I say uh, to to Massa's name wrong. I say names wrong. Cly. <laughs> I don't know why. I'm horrible. Yeah, he he uh, he's in between things right now, and he had some extra time, and I kind of pitched him a, an idea for this. And uh, and he loved it, so he hopped right on it and busted it out. So and he was he was still pretty happy with the pirate girl that I did for him. So that was cool. Let's see. I emailed someone to ask about using art. Oh yeah, they haven't got back to you. Yeah, that's that's okay. Um, just keep trying. And then where, whenever you post it somewhere, if you do post it like on your portfolio, just make sure you uh, give them credit, you know. The main reason you ask them is to make sure that it's not tied up in some kind of uh, licensing something or other, or if they just have issues with you doing, creating their work in 3D. I haven't really had that happen, but it's better to let them know that you want to do that. And it's flattering, and they usually want to be part of the process. Um, gosh, I'm messing this up. This needs to go to here. I'm not concentrating tonight very well with these shoulders and things. Um, up to, oh, thanks, Rob. Uh, Walker's question? Oh, I uh, just got some great help on the Facebook page for a Z remesher problem I was having, but maybe you could address it as well. When my legs were Z remeshed, they kind of dynamesh together and the polygroups were melded. Yes, Walker, that is, that's why. It's because they crossed the X axis. Um, and that's okay. Actually, that's okay. There's, you don't, you don't need to keep them separate. Um, in fact, my, the glutes here, I, they usually meld together when you dynamesh them anyway. Um, so you just kind of, you just kind of work it out. Uh, again, all, the only reason they're there is for volume to fill in what you're going to put the clothing on. So to keep them like separate or anything, I you know it's kind of weird, but, uh, is, is not necessary. So just they're they're more of a tool to use to build up your forms and then to put your clothing on top of as you go. So yeah, don't don't be concerned about them melding too much. Um the only thing you you should be concerned about melding together are your fingers. So you want to keep your fingers apart and like your armpits. Um I'm going to have to rework this up in here 
to make sure that the arm doesn't get melded to the body right there. You need to make sure you have enough space. But that's the only thing you really need to be concerned about. So, yeah, is hopefully that answers your question. Thanks for asking, by the way. Thanks, Rob, for pointing that out. Did I miss any other ones? You emailed someone about using their... Oh yeah, I answered you're a Sumerian, right? Hey Sumerian, I thought you were going to hit the, the summit. Did you not make it? Or did I meet you and I'm a dummy? That's, that's completely possible. I met so many people. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I wish I wish you were there, man. But it was it's completely possible that I met you and I could you know because I can't put your I have I have the artwork. If you've done artwork before, I have your artwork in my head. If I've seen it, and then I have your face, and then I have your name, and then I have your Twitch name, and so all those things have to align in order for me to like. Okay, this is this person and his work and his Twitch name. <laughs> you know? So please forgive me. Yeah, um there's some there's a handful of people that made it from the from Europe and Singapore and Brazil. Oh, some some two really cool guys from Brazil. They they were they were awesome. You skipped yours? Oh, okay. Uh, you can call me Shane, by the way, Carpet Sparky. Uh, I, when you said at Pixelogic, I thought you were talking to Kyle because he actually works for Pixelogic. Do you want to see another concept from a game you play? Uh, maybe? Sure. Or is it is it a character you're making or a game you play? Because it probably looks like uh, I would say this guy looks like uh, either the guy from Red Dead Redemption or um, the dude from Overwatch. What's his name? I'm so drawing a blank right now. I might finish him up like McCree from Overwatch. I remembered his name, McCree. I love to play McCree. Okay, sorry, Kyle. <laughs> I missed it. Okay, so see how this is starting to get stretched out right here? See this right here? Mm, stretched out. No good. Let's uh, let's Z-remesh this bad boy, shall we? Galaxy Rangers. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you had to go to your cousin's wedding in Seattle. Oh, I, I used to live in Seattle. I love Seattle. So let's duplicate this. We're going to save it. Let's call it just cowboy. Block out. Oh, one. Okay. Oh, that's that's cool. Right on. <laughs> Paragon, okay. Yeah, he's cool. Are you taking off? All right, Rob. See you in a bit. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, I might use that for uh, some uh, surface reference. That's really cool. Let's go for eight. I have not played Paragon. Is it fun? So now he's Z-remeshed. We can smooth this up. Uh, Walker, here's see here's another. You can see how this uh, this trap slash lat piece got 
kind of uh, meld it together in the middle when I z-remeshed it. See that? It, it's okay. It doesn't matter. See that? No big deal. But I do want to actually make this more like a lat. Make it fan out a little bit more. So do you always convert your final Dynameshes to Z-Remesh files? Yes, actually. Uh, I like to stay in this low kind of polygonal state as long as possible. So even when I Dynamesh, I will go back to Z-Remesh state pretty quickly. I don't, I don't tend to stay in Dynamesh very long because it doesn't, it doesn't like to stay smooth. Um, I don't know how else to explain it. <laughs> it's hard to it's hard to work with it and keep it smooth. Dynamesh is really good for like if you're trying to do some traditional clay type exploration or you're uh, I use it to to meld things together. So when I'm all done, I'll meld this whole thing together and it will it will help me blocking blocking a character out like this just kind of helps me with all the with all the shapes and keeps me out of the details. It forces me not to get detailed fast. That's why I do it this way. And it's nice because I I uh I don't really this is not a game mesh at all. It's not going to be going to a game until the very very end and I will do some retopology and rebuild it by hand at the end. So what I'll do is uh, I'm just caring about the forms, the silhouette, the shape, and how everything works together. And this is a this is a really good way to do it. <laughs> right? Yeah, but your your approach is completely different. Completely different. But it's this this would be really fun for you to try though. You know, it kind of it keeps you out of the weeds for a while, and then you just kind of. It's it's like I, I picture this is like a cake and you you build the cake and shape and form it and then the frosting is all your detail on top later. So right now I'm just making the cake. And sometimes I like to use a pinch brush and just put these little little details like this rib cage highlight and then I realize that it's really low. Let's get that higher. Turn off topological so I can drag the whole thing up higher. There we go. <laughs> yeah, so is mine thanks to stylization, right? But maybe I didn't know anatomy in the first place. I don't know. <laughs> I really need to study it more. Oh, I just know enough to, to get by. Now I remember, do I remember some of your pieces? It's just really awesome anatomy. Female, female goodness. Ronnie, I think I got. I think I have a picture with you in my, I posted a bunch of pictures from the summit, so tag yourself in there. All right, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll have to look you up. Whoops. Okay, let's get some, even though you don't see the, the pecs happening in there, I like to, I like to put them in. Detail your way away from anatomy reality. Yeah, right? <laughs> okay, this is like, needs to be flat. I might bring in a hand, I don't know, we'll see. 
You had a portfolio review? Oh. Well, dang it. Next time. Next time, next time. Hope that went well for you. Okay, and on, let's get these, let's get the pecs in there. Looks like a female, it's not a female. Perfect. Plates. Plate inserts. I love this gizmo because I can rotate things without moving my entire object to the side or to the top because with the transpose tool like to to rotate this on the Y right here see like this I would have to go drag that transpose tool out and switch my view from top like this and I don't have to do that anymore so it would be the average point size of your models um, excuse me let me like like poly counts for games uh, because when I'm in this phase, uh, I I don't I don't really pay attention at all, honestly. But at the in the end, they're anywhere from like six thousand to twelve thousand ish, somewhere in there, depending on if he's got his gun or you know how how detailed he is. This guy will probably be closer to the twelve fourteen thousand range. They're but they're they're nowhere near like Uncharted or Horizon Zero Dawn or anything like that. So. So yeah, right, right here. Don't don't pay attention to these points right here. And I don't know. That's that's polygons. I count in uh, polygons, not points. So I don't know how many points that is. Sorry. This is like taffy or like a. No airheads? You guys remember airheads? Reminds me of airhead candy. Wrapping it around this guy. More than 10. That's right. That's the answer. <laughs> uh, is there a schedule you should be following in the online class to stay up? So this is not a class, it's just a stream. It's just for fun, I just do it. Um, there is a schedule. I stream every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. If that's what you're asking. And there are lots of other streamers on here. I'm not the only one. Tomas is one. And he's, he's in here. He does awesome jewelry stuff. And then there's people like uh, even some people from Pixel Logic, like Paul, Paul Gabry and Joseph Trust. They stream on here occasionally, and uh, Ashley, which is a cubed. Utah is in Mountain Time, so right now at my in Utah right now that's where I'm at. It's 9:20. M MDT is that what it's called? Okay, I'm gonna I'm just gonna experiment with this for a minute. Just drag this into the use snake hook for this. Just kind of try and drag it into the pit. Yeah, thanks for joining the stream. It's good times. Here's my corn. Little bits of corn. Whoa. Oh, 
Oh, yes. Sakaki Kori. Ka Karu, sorry. He he does the most amazing, um, like, anime-looking female figurines. And that's... Some of my brushes are based off his brushes. So I, I don't... I don't claim these all of these brushes. He he does some amazing stuff. He has a hairbrush. That sounds funny, hairbrush, but he does have a hairbrush. Yeah, all the SK brushes. So good. So good. Let's inflate this together. Polish the pecs. Get out the pec polish. <laughs> Bazooka plasma. That's that's uh, that's the beauty of ZBrush. It just you know you just make it however you see fit. A lot of people will block out their characters with uh, Z spheres. Some people will bring in a base mesh from Maya or something like that. Uh, some people will build a base mesh inside ZBrush that's like a full body. Some people will start with the mannequins. You know, there's it's all across the board. It, it just I, I like to use this method because it forces me to think of the big shapes and how things are actually working and flowing together. Um, I don't get this level of, um, I don't know, like flow and it's a, it's a bad word, but <laughs> inner penetration, <laughs> like how this upper arm penetrates into this lower arm. I don't get that with Z spheres, you know, like, like this subtle curve right here and this overlapping muscle up here and down here, the forearms coming up into the upper arm. I just don't get that, you know, with, with Z sphere startup. And I just like to, it, it'll, it allows me to stay out of the details and work with the big shapes. So it's my favorite. Oh, does he have a book? Really? Oh my gosh. Okay. I'm going to have to check that out. I love his work so much. But it makes no sense to me. Like like a girl with this big battleship turret and she's just kind of hanging out with this battleship turret that doesn't make any sense. But man, is it cool. It's in Japanese. It doesn't matter if it's in Japanese because it's 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 like the the international language <laughs> of art. It's so good. That's cool. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder if it'll be at CTN. Tomas, do you go to CTN? Ever? Do you know what that? Do you ever go to that? They have a whole bunch of uh, Japanese import books there art books and I wonder if it's if, if it's there a photo translator for iPhone really really CTN is creative talent network it's in it's in uh, uh, Burbank every year this year it's I'm trying to remember like the 16th of November I go so I go to two conferences every single year I go to the ZBrush summit and I go to CTN those are my two big ones CTN Animation Expo. That's the name of the thing right here. So it's uh, November 17th through the 19th. And it's it's a lot, it's not very much, or gosh, I can't speak tonight. There aren't very many 3D artists there. It's a lot of 2D art. There are, there are some, but it's mainly like film, television. There are some maquettes there, not, not very many. So I don't know if you would if you would dig it, but um, there are the the I guess the people there that inspire me to to model characters like they have speakers, a lot of animation speakers like Glenn Keane from Disney, of course, and stuff like that. They 
and uh, one of my favorite sculptors, uh, Kent Melton from Leica, and and free, he freelances a lot for Disney. He he is there often, and I love talking to that guy. Oh, you almost won my class from the summit. I haven't heard from those guys that have won, so I hope Kyle. I need to talk to you about that. Make sure they get their prizes. If you're still here, Kyle. Kyle's like a unicorn sometimes. Okay. Get this head tuned a little bit. Yet, yeah, Tomas, let me know if you if you make it. I'd love to hang out with you, man. Say your name wrong and everything. That'd be awesome. <laughs> like Tom Bancroft you guys know Tom Bancroft he's there every year mm. oh, there's so many some of the big names in 2D comics like uh... oh how do oh you found it oh <laughs> on eBay how much 75 bucks totally worth it dang it buy it now now <laughs> okay thanks for showing me I will be trying to find myself that book that's great the, he, he posted a really fantastic how-to kind of walkthrough image on zebra central a while back where he talked about his brushes and stuff so good I learned so much just from that one image. Yeah, go, go, bye, bye. <laughs> Got four days from Japan, really? Wow, okay. It's good to know what you paid for it. I can keep an eye out for it. So here's here's uh, something different that I do for males versus females is um, you can see these these subtle subtle plane changes for the stylized anatomy male. Okay, what I'll do is I'll I'll come from the rib cage down past the hips so you can see how this is boxy square. It doesn't poof out. Doesn't have the doesn't have the hip bones like the female does, and the female's apex of the muscle. Uh, or the hips usually peak out right here okay and males I'll drop it and I'll usually peak it out like mid thigh or lower depending on how muscly the guy is you know you could you could come down here just kind of keep that straight and then cut it in and Johannes kind of has it here see how it's kind of coming down and then cutting in that's uh, that's that's kind of good practice there for, for male legs. Then the inside kind of comes down to about here and then it has this little kick out around the knee right here. And then there's there's more detail you can put in here that I'm not going to but there's kind of a like a tendon that goes like right here. See that? Now it's starting to become even more like like a Marvel comic book leg, you know? Yeah. For stylized, you just kind of keep it, keep it soft, keep it stylized. You don't have to do any, any of that. So, uh, any tips for making a male character lanky? So lanky, just get it thinner, you know, and, uh, it, it depends on the concept, but you'll want to like push his head forward and, uh, kind of get rid of even more detail so see how I kind of have this this build up right here of, of these arms you'll want to just thin those right out and even start to undefine the connections in the elbows and the knees and make them more kind of hose-ish I guess <laughs> you know like those old 30s cartoons like Cuphead that new game called Cuphead that uh, that has some super really good designs in it from the old 
30s cartoons if you guys have seen that yet it's so good the male butt is different from the female yes it is so um, with the stylized the stylized rear and I'm not I'm not doing it here but it's more square where the where the females is more like uh, butterfly shaped right so a female and it, it has a little more weight down here and it gets pulled out further so it's almost like a triangle where the males is more square and you I mean you typically don't have any of this this I need to close this off but you know I'm just this is just temporary but it needs to be closed off and then squared off so uh, later on what I'll do is I'll typically come in here and then square it off like that right and I'll square I'll make it kind of you can't see it with this arm in the way but I'll kind of come from where it connects to the back and just make it less less round and just kind of square it off men are all about square ladies are all about round so if that if that makes sense I might leave that So did I make the concept myself? No, this is from uh, Johannes Helgeson. I can't really say his name correctly, but um, I need, let me put up his art station. Or actually, Rob, would you mind? Rob's like my go-to link guy. <laughs> would you, could you put up a link to Johannes's art station for me, please? Scope that 3D booty. <laughs> Okay. Let's get some ears on this guy. Excuse me, and I might um I might block in that hat just for just to help with proportion. He's got a really unique clean jawline too. Just kind of comes down a little bit so we can go get this pinch brush just gonna run it along here start to form that chin a little high there we go then you want to end it right at the ear so it comes up the ear that doesn't exist yet and then the uh, the head is split at the eye line is that's that's what I like to do personally that's kind of a thing that I've just I've just started to do because oh you found it thank you so much me <laughs> I guess maybe Rob to oh yeah Rob had to go he had to drive home okay Rob's not here but thank you very much that's the best twitch name ever by the way That should be everybody's name. Me. But you should check out Johannes's uh, art. It's it's so amazing. The way he can paint light is. I've only seen one other person that can paint. Well, there's there are several, but one that sticks out in my mind that can paint light like Johannes does, and that is uh, my friend Sam Nelson that I used to work with at Avalanche. I swear he has a rendering engine in his head. You know, and so does Johannes, the way he, he paints light. It's just unbelievable. I could, oh my gosh. Okay, so, uh, the, and that's who my pirate, that's who my pirate was based off of as well, the pirate girl. Did you guys see this? Here, I gotta show you. I showed the people in the beginning of the stream, but now that there's like almost 100 people here, I'll show you guys again. This is a print of that pirate girl. She was at the ZBrush Summit and she made it home in one piece. They actually gave it to me. I had no idea they were printing her this big. See that? Here. Let me see if I can make this bigger. Whoop. Look at this. You see that? This is my hand. 
That's how big it is. Look at that sword. It's like so, so big. <laughs> There's the back. Has all the all the all the tattoos. Look at the detail on that shoulder. Let's see focus camera. The sword's too close. Anyway, so big. And then um, Moon Ray Sprint Ray printed out this uh, this Kate character for me. See this one? She's a lot smaller, but she turned out really good. See the hair? Ooh, the face. There we go. Look at that. Awesome. <laughs> so, um, so they I put keys into the base, and then the guys over at Form Labs printed out the pirate girl for me. I gave them some keys. They they put in the rest. So she has keys. She split into a couple pieces. Then, uh, and then my friend, uh, and one of my students, Angel, my friend Angel, he he made this baby group for me. See that? <laughs> it tur turned out so awesome. Yay. This is heavy. Um, the air airport security actually stopped me and wanted to know what this was. They didn't want to know what that big blade was on the pirate girl. They wanted to know what this was because it's heavy. <laughs> like, what is that? Can we take a look? So that was kind of funny. Anyway. All right. Let's shrink me back down. All right. Sorry, let me take a drink. Yeah, they just wanted to look at Groot. Bring that thing out. Actually, the guy was jealous when he when, <laughs> when I brought it out. The guy that was looking at it, he's like, "Oh man, that's so cool." Yes, it is cool. Thank you, Angel. Way cool. Let's get some ears on this guy. Ears, ears. draw another one. Just shape it. A little high. One mistake that a lot of uh, students make is the connection to the ear. It, it actually is very it, it just kind of rolls right into it. It doesn't sit off of the head like, whoa, hold on. Like this, you know, with a big, a big transition here. It's, it's in there, it's connected. There's a, actually skin that goes from the side of your head and rolls right into, you know, right, right into it. So you need to be aware of that connection. Then both sides start to touch themselves, and after a DynaMesh, I have some holes in the mesh. Any advice to prevent that? Yes. Uh, one is add more thickness to your scopes. Make sure you have enough thickness. And to get them, uh, if you if you do want to keep it that thin, uh, try and turn up your DynaMesh level. It will be more dense, and it will be harder on your machine. But the more dense the DynaMesh, the less you the less or the smaller the envelope is to cross the center line and get holes in there and if you want to sculpt on one side and not the other you use what's called back face mask and that's on my interface it's right here if you have my user interface if you don't you can find it under brush and auto masking and back face mask it's right there you can drag that out on top of your user interface and uh, then when you're sculpting on the front, it will not affect the back. But sometimes it'll cause some weird things with certain brushes. So you might have to turn it off on certain brushes, but that's, that's how you would do that. So I hope that answers your question. That was something I would do all the time when I was first starting too. <laughs> Okay. 
I think I'm going to make him even narrower left to right, just a little bit. So I'm right now I'm looking at uh, his his waistline. That's what this is right here, and then the difference between the how far down the crotch is compared to that waistline, and that's why I raise that a bit. And on males I'll also box that area off. Let me turn off lazy mouse. See how this is kind of boxed off. And then um, use polish to polish this down. Very boxy, very flat. Use back face mask. Sometimes you forget to enable it before a sculpt. Yeah, you have to remember. That's why I have it out on my interface. So and it's, it's I keep my button contrast blue very bright and my my background very dark so I can really tell and it really it can remind me if if I have things turned on or off uh, but sometimes it still doesn't work I, I'll forget like I'll forget that this dynamic subdivision is turned on all the time even though it's a bright blue button <laughs> so but that's one thing I try to do okay let's move this See, I have uh, like 15 minutes maybe. Or when switching different brushes. Yeah. Like you have to turn it on on which, uh, every, every brush you want to use it with. Even smoothing. So smoothing, you can turn back face masking on with smoothing. So that's as long as you hold down shift and then you push back face mask. See, now it's on my smoothing. That's another thing too. Or else you can smooth them together. So beware of that too. <laughs> Oh, hey, Panama. How's it going? You almost lost the stream. Oh, you thought it was 9 p.m. Pacific. So I have another, about another 15 minutes before I'm done. So, uh, and then you can always wa watch it back. But on, uh, on males also, I like to go, you know, like I said, the theme is kind of boxy, boxy, boxy. So I like to put edges right here. See that? Not not that harsh, but let's turn the intensity down a bit. I'm going to put it again. Just to kind of box them off. This was a this was kind of an infinity thing that we did, so I like it, so I keep it around. And they could do the same thing on the back. Very boxy on the back of the leg right here. It just helps keep it strong and square. <laughs> then you can smooth it back down. Oh, thanks. Yeah, thanks, Spike. Thanks for stopping by and asking questions. Love it. Ask away. Okay. Then with the with the shin, there's also a peak that kind of comes and goes across. And then this side is flat, so you can use a polish brush and polish that down a bit just to make it flat on this side. And then you can take the inflate brush and kind of round it out on the opposite side. I'm starting to pull this knee down. I didn't mean to do that, so I'll just smooth that back out. I like to make the upper leg uh, kind of come in and hook out like a knee. Just pinch that knee in there more. I don't have enough geometry to really do anything with it right now, but anyway, I'll work that out later when I have a little bit more uh, 
resolution in there. Okay, I want to raise his knees up. Feeling a little, maybe even his feet. Now with his feet you got to be careful, you can't just grab the move brush and drag him up because you'll get that. Or you'll get the back lifting up like that. So it's better to mask it off and then blur the mask and then invert it and pull it up. He's just feeling a little bit too tall. We can check those proportions again. Just kind of put him back here, turn him slightly. There we go. So he's going to have bigger hands than this that I have. These are just kind of placeholder hands. I'll probably get some big, big, big fat square hands to put on there and then uh, make his feet bigger, like wider. They're looking pretty small right now. Let's turn the opacity up on this. Do you guys want to see the final painted version of this? It's really cool. this right here. Yeah, look at that. Is that awesome? Let's see. There we go. Can't wait. It's going to be it's going to be over several streams, so bear with me. <laughs> this you guys I probably I don't know if I'll do everything on the streams, but so you guys don't get bored. But I'll do as much as I can. That makes sense. Keep his legs, his feet flat. Yeah, I'm telling you, <laughs> no quitting. No, I wouldn't quit. I would be I would just do it offline, you know? Just because I don't know if people want to watch me get down in the weeds. Maybe. Maybe they do. Maybe that's what they want to see. I did stream pretty much all of the pirate girl on here. Did I finish the sculpt from last week? Uh, oh, you mean the Frankenstein? No, I still need to put the shirt. I was I was out at uh, the ZBrush Summit, so I didn't do too much. Um, I still need to put the shirt on, so and finish the finish the screws. You want to watch the whole thing? <laughs> Why am I? <laughs> uh, I'm not going to answer that question. IBM. <laughs> Why aren't you driving a Volkswagen? I don't know. Uh, it's all good. <laughs> it's funny. You have a blank art station page. Nice. Fill it with love now. Let's see all the goods. And I want to see it marked mature, mister. You know why? Cuz I want to see I want to see the goods. <laughs> you should talk to um well, I don't know. Should be fine. I was going to say you should talk to Leo. Leo's the owner. He's he's a really cool guy. Make sure it's it's good. <laughs> Which one is better? No contest. <laughs> Which one? Ah, they're for different purposes. It's kind of like Maya. It's a better overall, overall program, you know. So, one second. So 
Sorry, my dog's whining for some reason. I tell my wife to come get her. All right. Oops, where did that go? Where'd you guys go? There we go. Not closing ZBrush. Save as Cowboy Block Out. All right. There we go. Let's block in these fingers. Yeah, IBM. This is this is a program uh, for high resolution sculpting, 3D sculpting. Uh, so if you if you do want to get into trying this out, there's a free program called Sculptress that you can get for free. You can just play with it. And uh, there's one step up from that, and it's called ZBrush Core. And it's a very light, ver not very light, it's just, it's a, a, a light version of ZBrush. And it has a lot of the functionality that ZBrush does. It is missing some things, but you can uh, get that. And there's a, there's a purchasing path on your way to the full version of ZBrush. So, um, so there's Sculptress, ZBrush Core, and then ZBrush 4R8 is the full version. And there is a, a trial of ZBrush that you can download. You can find the link down in the text below this Twitch chat. You can try it out. It's called Sculptress. Sculptress. I actually have a video. I'll show you guys. Uh, to teach you how to use it. It's just a very simple video. That a lot of people have enjoyed. I made this a long time ago. So forgive me. There you go. There's my video on how to how to get into it how to make a, a head with sculptress. I did a long time ago. So anyway, Okay, I'm gonna wrap this guy up for tonight. I have five minutes left. Um, so thank you everyone. This is a, I did this block out in a, in a couple hours. So uh, you can too, you know, you can, you, I mean, not to sound cheesy, but you can get in here, use primitive objects, block out a character. It, it doesn't take that long once you know it, you know, once you kind of know what you're doing, not that I know what I'm doing, but once you learn what what to do inside of ZBrush. It's, it's a fairly quick process. It, uh, it's, it's just, it moves at the speed of thought sometimes, which is super nice, especially when you're experimenting with say the clay buildup brush, like traditional clay, you can just really get in there and experiment and, and, and push stuff around. So, um, if you want this user interface, or these brushes down here, I give them away for free on my website. Uh, my website is 3dcharacterworkshop.com and I also give away my, my ruler file. There's a ruler in here and this guy's huge, but you can see this ruler right here. And this just helps you go from 3D or uh, from uh, ZBrush to Maya or anything else that uses centimeters to go or meters to go back and forth with. And it also helps you 3D print so it you can use it as a bounding box to help you print out to scale and i cover how to use the ruler file over on my yeah thanks for the thanks for the link over on 3dcharacterworkshop.com and you can uh and it'll just put you on my 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 newsletter and i hardly ever send out newsletters just basically when i'm opening up my course again i do do an online course where i teach how to do this stuff and I just closed enrollment. I had it open w during the ZBrush Summit, and um, I I may be opening it again before the end of the year, but I'm not sure. We'll have to see. So, yeah, this ruler. Uh, I I made this ruler. Uh, I've made this ruler for when I was working on Disney Infinity, because we needed to be super precise. I did build this ruler in Maya. It's based on. You can use it for millimeters, centimeters, or, or or two meters if you even want to for like game characters. So this is either 200 millimeters tall or 20 centimeters tall. 
I mean, it doesn't convert like like real meters does, but you can since you know since it's using the meter system, you can use it, ignoring these numbers sort somewhat. You can use it for for those. So, oh, you got first enrollment. <laughs> Well, welcome, man. It, it's and that's that's what I love about the course. It's built for busy people. You can start when you want to. You can get in whenever you want. And I do upgrades all the time. Upgrades are free, just like with ZBrush. With ZBrush, all upgrades are free. It's absolutely fantastic. So, anyway, thanks everybody for joining me tonight. Um, I will be streaming at the exact same time next week on this same channel at seven o'clock. Pacific time. So if you want, catch me again. Yep, lifetime access um, for my course. It's super. I love it. So anyway, yeah, thanks for thanks everybody for joining me. Uh, yeah, thanks, Tomas. Let me know how to say your name correctly. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to catch your stream next week. I can't wait. I'm going to bug you. <laughs> and then you know, I can hear you say your name. That, that'd be awesome. Okay, so then I don't botch it again. Anyway, guys, have a good night. And uh, have a great week. We'll see you next week. Take care.